This is the second video in the restore of the D110. In the first video, we did the backing up. In this video, we're going to do the restoring of this unit. So if you have the factory set as SysX, then you'll be able to restore this unit back to the factory. For both the backup and restore, you're going to need a few bits. First, you're going to need a computer. It doesn't matter whether it's a Mac or whether it's a Windows machine, but you're still going to need a computer. Um, and I'm going to be honest here, I always use, uh, this is a Windows 10 machine, I always use Windows and I use a program called MidiOX. Um, some people use BOEM, um, but I don't use BOEM, I use MidiOX, so that's what this is going to be based on. It's going to be based on a Windows 10 machine with MidiOX. The second thing you need is one of these things, which is your MIDI interface. And I've said this many times on the channel before. Um, I don't use the interface that's in the rack, which is my big interface for when the studio is up and running. I always use this little diddly interface here, which is just a simple two in, two out. Uh, this is a MIDI man uh, from M Audio, but any one of these sort of uh, relatively cheap, I say cheap, I can't remember how much this was, 30 pounds, something like that. Anyway, any one of these uh, relatively cheap, but stable MIDI interfaces. And the reason why I use this smaller interface is because I find it easier to address when you've got a device that's quite chatty. And a lot of these older synths, um, when you leave them on their own, are actually quite chatty. So there's, there's stuff that's coming down um, from the machine all the time. The DX7 is a real classic example of that. Um, so you need one of those. Next thing you need, USB cable to plug it in. And then you need at least one, there are two here, but one five pin DIN MIDI cable. So this is the old stuff, okay? Um, because there's no USB port on this. Okay, simple as that. So in terms of wiring this up, let me move the camera angle and then we'll wire it up. Okay, wiring the um, unit up, start with the MIDI side of it. Uh, as I said, two MIDI cables that I have in my hand. Just let me undo the wires, like so. And as always, I get two ends of the same side. There you go. Okay. So, in order to wire up, you see cables flying around in front of the screen here. So, there you go, either end of the MIDI cable. This is going to be the out from the device, so we plug that into three USB sockets here. We plug that one into the out, and therefore because it comes out of the out of the device, it must go into the in on the interface. Now I've said before when you've seen this interface, the out and the in on the A channel on the opposite sides actually makes it really easy to remember which way around you're going. Um, the second one is obviously we want to take the in from the computer because I'm going to do both in one hit uh, in terms of video in, so I want both sides connected. And that has to come out of the out A, which happens to be this socket on the other side of the interface. So we have the interface all set up and running. Then we need to plug in the computer. Now the computer's round the other way, just purely because it's on top of the the unit and I turn the unit around so I can film the connections. Um, and the square end, which is a USB B socket, goes into this socket on the back of the device like so. And then the A socket goes into a USB socket on the machine itself. Now what you can see is the there's the interface uh, just negotiated with the machine. It's classless, this particular interface, and I don't know whether you heard the machine go bing, bing, bing. That means the machine has recognized the interface. So we're all good to go from a MIDI perspective to either backup or restore. Okay, this is the part of the video where we do the channel self-promotion. So if you want to skip past this bit, fast forward now. Anyway, if you haven't subscribed to the channel and you like uh, videos about 
the sort of stuff that's in this video, hit the subscribe icon. Save yourself some time, hit the bell icon as well, because then you'll be notified every time new content hits the channel. If you like the content of the video, please give it a thumbs up. Really helps with the old YouTube algorithm thingy. Um, also, leave comments down below. I read all the comments, I respond to all the comments, and sometimes, like this video, I make videos about those comments. Um, down there somewhere also is the TMTG community. For less than the price of a cup of coffee, sponsor the production of videos and keep the channel rocking. And finally, down there also are the uh, Instagram and Facebook feeds. That's where all the channel notices will appear. So now back to this particular video. So in order to restore the D110, we need to set the D110 to receive uh, a dump of SysX data. And we do that by first disabling the memory protections. So how we do that is we go into system and then we use the group buttons to go up one. And if it's got memory protection to on, you need to use the bank buttons to switch that off. The next thing we need to do is we need to use the group buttons again and we go up until we find the exclusive unit number and if it's not set to 17 use the bank numbers buttons to change it until it is 17. And surprisingly, that's all you have to do to the D110 to set it up to receive MIDI uh, SysX. It's really confusing because on a lot of keyboards, people are looking for an option that says, you know, now receive, and you press the now receive and it's, it's set up to receive. But on the these D series synthesizers, that didn't happen. That wasn't how this worked. All you had to do was disable the memory protect and make sure that it was in receive mode and then you could send SysX to these devices whenever you liked. And to be honest, that is really, really dangerous <laughs> because if you accidentally send SysX, you can completely um, French connection the, the, the memory on this thing and then have to go through and reset it. So um, we'll go through the procedure at the end of this to put this back into a safe mode. But that for all at the moment is all we need to do. Okay, we're now back to the computer. And we need to set the computer up to send SysX to the D110. And to do that, we need to go into the SysX menu. And we do that by going View, and then selecting the SysX option. Just move that over here. And then we need to set the configuration of the, unit, of the computer up to send correctly. And we're going to do that by going SysX and Configure. And once we've got the configure menu up, we're looking at the output buffers. And for this unit, these need to be set no higher than 64. You can run this at 32, but at 128, it starts dropping. So um, 64, and the unit number is 17. You just saw me set that on the unit, or make sure that was set correctly on the unit. In terms of the other options, uh, we only select delay after F7, set that to 60 milliseconds and show F7, F0 to F7 in color text, okay? That's all we do here. The computer is now set up to send correctly to the D110. Click OK to save those parameters. Now we're ready to transmit the file. And to transmit the file, we go File, Send SysX File, Select the file that I want to send, which is the one I stored in the rest in the backup video, which is D110 today, and then click open and it will immediately start sending. Now the thing to watch is this screen shows nothing happening. Let's just exit that. 
And what you can't see, because it's just off screen, and I'll just tilt the camera around a sec, there you go. I don't know whether you can see the MIDI butt light flashing. So that's showing that the unit is actually receiving MIDI. You can also see the, the light flashing here. You can't see the computer screen, but I'm recording that separately. And when the computer screen stops sending, that means it sent everything through to the computer to the unit. Again, the unit doesn't really acknowledge it's received anything. So we just on the computer here, just going to close that down. And then we'll go back to the unit. Okay, I said that putting the unit into receive mode is quite dangerous because you could actually very easily overwrite the unit. So first thing, let's have a quick look at the patches. Um, as you can see, if we do that, all the patches have loaded correctly. Just exit that screen. So now what we need to do is now need to protect this. So again, we go system, use the group buttons, to get to the point where it says memory protect equals off and we put that back to on and then we go exit. So now the unit will no longer receive SysX or if it does, it will ignore it. Um, so this unit is now set up and protected again. And that is the restore process. Hope that it helped. Thank you.